Hey, I'm Joanne. I am a furniture upcycler and I am going to be uploading videos every single Sunday on different projects. So some of them will be DIY, some of them will be furniture upcycling, some of them will be crafty stuff. But for this first video, funnily enough, for a furniture upcycler, I decided to uncycle a chair. So I took a air call rocking chair that had been painted in chalk paint years ago and I am stripping all of that back and bringing it back to its natural look. Not something I did that often. It was worth all the effort for this piece. So it's a gorgeous uh, mid-century air call rocking chair. Uh, it's a child's rocking chair actually. I used an eco-friendly paint stripper. I stripped it all back. I got as much of the paint off as I possibly could. I gave it a few coats of Danish oil. Lovely to work with. It's food safe. It's toy safe. Um, and I'll be sharing more about that uh, in this video. So I hope you enjoy. So here we have the before of this project. So we're gonna strip it all back. I'm gonna check to see does it rock, and it does. So we're gonna have a closer look. As you can see, the chalky paint is just flaking off in all different kinds of areas. Um, and it's coming off really, really easy. I'll just show you with this leg here. Like some of it is basically just have to touch it and it crumbles off. I, I don't know why that is. Um, it was painted about seven years ago um, and it's in pretty bad condition paint wise structurally wise it's fine it just needs a small few little um, repair jobs and there's a bit of dehydration on the chair as well I'm going to go in with this purdy um, 10 in 1 tool it's one of my favorite tools it does loads and I'm just going to scrape off any of the paint that's kind of coming off uh, by itself so I'm going to try and remove as much of that flaky paint that I can because if I just put um like a paint remover on this, all of that flaky paint is going to make a piece and it's going to make my job a little bit harder. So the easiest thing for me to do is get rid of, of as much paint as I possibly can um by just using the scraper. Like it's coming off really easy in in most of the areas, like like the handles and the legs in, in some parts. And then on the C part, it wasn't coming off as well, just maybe around the edges. So you can see here I'm trying to scratch it off and it's not coming off at all. So I'll definitely need the paint remover for that. So what I'm going to do is just after I took off as much paint as I can, I just got a little duster brush and dusted it all off and make sure that you dust your surface as well. So, so I'll just give the floor a quick sweep and I'm going to put down an old rug to protect the floor. And I always try and go for an eco-friendly paint stripper uh, just because it's way easier to use, especially just with home projects. I sanded this seat pad as well. So... Once I'm applying a really thick layer of the paint stripper, any areas that I sanded, the paint stripper, it's going to help the paint stripper get in, in, in underneath those areas. Um, and I'm kind of going around in a like, little circular motion as well to work in the paint stripper so that it'll do a better job for me. <laughs> when I'm scraping it off then as well, I would have uh, just newspaper print to hand so I can kind of clean off the gunk onto that. Then for the last little bit, I go in with a stainless steel ball um to scrub the last little bit off so don't use wire wool because you can get some of the wire in on the grooves and it rusts so stainless steel you won't have that problem and then to get rid of that last little layer just just go in with metal spirits on cloth um so this all just makes it easier to sand if i didn't do any of these steps it would clog up my sandpaper really really quickly so there's like chalky paint and then there's that wax so the wax acts as a barrier so even when I go to sand it back it clogs the sandpaper really really fast and then you go through loads of sandpaper and you're not really after getting that far on removing the paint so I'll use this process then all over the piece of furniture um, I go back in with my scraper every now and again if there's a bit that I can get off but the um, eco-friendly paint stripper is really really good because uh, it doesn't like smell as bad as those normal paint strippers then i'm going in with an orbital sander with 120 grit uh sandpaper and that i'm only doing the flat surfaces so i'm not going to do any of the spools here because i will the sand the sander will go too fast and then i could risk like damaging the spools or making them look really flat so i don't want to do that always go in the direction of the grain when you're sanding as well sometimes you might have to go over and back if you just need to remove a piece um, of paint um so i'll go in with uh, 120 grit sandpaper then i worked up to um 150 and then i'll go in with 240 then to smoothen it out so i do that all over as much as the large surface areas as i can and then i go in with these to these small little areas now these little areas are really irritating to do and you kind of start losing faith that you're ever going to get this project done 
But I just took a little day's break and came back and just concentrated on those areas and it was fine. Um, because there's just so many of those small little bits and I wanted to remove it all. I didn't want to leave anything behind because I think it really affects the overall finish. Um, so just spending a little bit of extra time really working in those small little areas. So I went in with um, a 120, 150 and then uh, worked up to uh, 240 and that's just to kind of smoothen out everything. So there was lots of spools on this which were really annoying but really worth it when, when you get them finished. So I just concentrated on working on one spool at a time and moved along the chair and then before I knew it, I was done. Um, and then just on the last bit then, I went all over the whole chair and I'd always like make sure it was nice and soft and any areas that needed a little bit extra sanding, I kind of did that from feeling the chair. And then I just removed all the big bits of dust with the hoover and the brush attachment and then I went in with a little tack cloth. So tack cloth has just got a little bit of beeswax in it and it's great for pulling those last little bits of dust that are left behind. Um, and I'll link a description below of all the stuff that I've used. So now I'm going to do some little bit of repair work. So a little bit of wood glue um, on a brush to get in on that little joint. So I'm going to do it on the top and on the bottom and then if I have any extra glue I can always wipe that away. Um, and I'm just going to push it back into position so it doesn't need a clamp or anything because once I pushed it down it was perfect so I just needed to leave it dry um, and I'd always kind of leave wood glue dry overnight um, if I can. <laughs> I am then going to just fill some small areas. This is actually just from a wood knot, um, but I'm going to go in with this wood filler. Um, always make sure that you read the instructions, but this is a two-part um, filler. It dries like rock hard, um, and you need to mix it really, really well and apply it with a little spatula. It's also stainable as well, so you can stain it. You can put it on any kind of uh, wood surface and stain it to match that surface as well which is is really really good for a wood filler um so i'm just going to pop this in and i'm going to leave it dry for a few hours and i'm going to do the same thing um around any areas or gaps or, that i think the chair might need once your filler is dry you just sand it back um to make sure that it's flush with the chair and you go in with your danish oil always make sure that you have a jar to store your cloth in after each coat because it does say on the tin that it can combust um, so make sure that you always store it in a jar um, and any product you use like that make sure you always read the instructions and the safety instructions as well so make sure you're wearing gloves and a mask and then I'm going to with a lint free cloth and I'm just buffing it into the wood and then I can come along with a rag and remove any excess um, oil that's on the piece because I don't want it to darken in that area there was some areas in this chair as well when I oiled them that I could see the paint hadn't lifted in so I did go back and sand some of those areas as well to see could I get more of the paint off and then concentrated on building that up on the second coat. So I did about three or four coats on this and I left it dry for a few hours in between each coat. So it just kept buffing. You could give it a few more coats if you wanted to darken it as well. Um, But I was happy after around the, like not a fourth full coat, but like a fourth kind of little buff in certain areas. Um. So always make sure that you pop it into the jar after each use and take off the excess. And there is the finished chair. I absolutely love it. I have gone back in after I filmed this and picked, um, just did little like tweaking and peeking, picking bits um, around the legs and stuff that I could see that there was a small little paint left. And I'll probably pick it a little bit more. But for now, there it is. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, um, just pop them in the description box below and I'll get back to you and next Sunday's project is a kitchen based project um, and it's a good one so make sure you tune in for next week and I will see you then.